Hello and welcome back to everyone that's tuned in to the American Ultra Stock channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today is a very exciting video. I think one that we had been waiting for a long time. Pochettino's first roster has dropped as you guys see it on the screen right here. And today we're going to be bringing to you guys our analysis, our opinions on what was his first roster. Some, some misses because of injury. As we know, we're always plagued by some injuries. But initial thoughts overall Braden are you happy with this roster are you not and again guys keep in mind we're going to walk through position but not position by position but group by group as it was grouped by the USSF website right there but your thoughts Braden was it good overall well like you mentioned I think the main thing to take away from this is that we have so many injuries and it's not even just the key players I mean I think Adams and Deaths they've been out for a while they're the main ones uh, even one of the players who's on here is coming back from injury. I don't even know if he's going to be fit for the games. But even some of the younger guys who were included in the last camp, players like Cowell, Wiley, Cochin, maybe Griffin Yao, who could have had a shout since there's so many injuries. Everyone's injured. It's kind of crazy. And I think that leads to some maybe not ideal inclusions, but that's the reality of our situation. And I think my other main takeaway, the key one here, is that I don't really care too much about who's actually on the roster, which it kind of seems stupid because why are we making a video about it? But I think what I mean by that more is that it doesn't matter who Poch picks. I'm, I'm going to be happy either way. It's about what he does with the players. We didn't hire him to make better roster selections than Greg. We hired him to get more out of the players than Greg. And I think the fact that he's, I mean, we'll go through the roster, but this is a very Greg-like roster. A lot of the players are very similar mainly because Pochettino didn't have enough time to get a full look at the expansive player pool. But if he can already deliver us two wins against Panama and against Mexico, that's already a, a huge improvement on what Greg did. That's really what we hired Poch to do. So in terms of the actual player personnel, yeah, there's going to be some areas where we disagree and we'll get into that. But if he can get the most out of the players, it doesn't really matter. Interesting, interesting. I, I have a bit of a differing view. I, I, I think that the the roster is still a, a main thing. I know that we, we hired him to instill something different in the squad and ultimately change how we perform. Not exactly the players. We, we have the pool we have and can't really change it. So this is the group that he selected for his first run around. Uh, going right here through the goalkeepers, Ethan Horvath, who's now a bench player at Cardiff. Just wanted to add that. I know some people don't keep up with them, so just wanted to show some news right there. Patrick Schulte. Uh, Zach Steffen, a surprise pick right here, I think, for some people. And Matt Turner. Braden, your thoughts on these goalkeepers? I think it's fair to say if we add them all up and combine it to one goalkeeper, we might have a half-decent goalkeeper. What do you think? I'm not trying to be too harsh on them. Obviously, just a bit of banter. But your thoughts? Any notable misses that you think could have been included? Well, if we add up all of their best qualities, uh, for Steffen, it's huge chances in big games. For Turner, it's obviously his stellar distribution. Uh, for Horvath, it's probably sitting on the bench because he's now doing it at club. He used to do it so much for the USMNT. I don't even know what Schulte has. MLS trophies, maybe. I don't even think you get a, any good goalkeeper if you add up the best traits from all of them. There's two key omissions here, maybe three. One of them is Diego Cochin from the last game. He is injured. I think it's a shame because it would have been nice to see him here as the fourth goalkeeper. One thing I will say, why are you bringing four goalkeepers if one of them isn't a young guy to sit and learn, get some experience from the older guys? Zach Steffen is the new guy from the last camp. If he's going to be a fourth goalkeeper, the guy is what, 28, 29? Why is he a fourth goalkeeper if he's not going to play? And who knows, maybe he does play in one of the games. I don't know what Poch is thinking there. I think maybe the logic is to give all four of these guys a fair shake and see who impresses in training. But what's the point? Stefan's been... Now, these stats are of a month ago because it's when I posted it on Twitter. Go follow our Twitter, by the way, if you haven't already. Uh, but Zach Steffen was statistically the second worst goalkeeper in all of MLS uh, as of about a month ago. Those stats probably updated a little bit. Maybe he got a little bit better. The fact remains, he is undebatably a bottom half goalkeeper in MLS. And there's about 10 American goalkeepers in the league that are better than him. Most notably, Matt Fries, who is, I believe, 25 or 26, plays for NYCFC. He's, even before his prime as a goalkeeper, he's still pretty young. And he's one of the best goalkeepers in MLS as an American. It makes no sense to call up Stefan over him. I think Poch probably is just going with a familiar name. He obviously played at City. He's been with the USA in the past. I don't blame the guy for not watching MLS and 
picking the best players from there, but it just doesn't really make sense for Stefan to be here. Slanina is the other notable omission, but let's be honest, he's not playing well in League One. Barnsley don't even stop for the international break, so there's no point to even see him here. He needs to improve his form and quickly. I'm curious. Uh, I know I didn't ask you at first, but very quickly, who would you start? Who would be? Would it still be Matt Turner? I mean, I'm just asking because I think that I, although he's the number one, there may be a legitimate case for just trying out Schulte. Who knows? Yeah, so I think the first game is against Panama, right? Uh, in Austin, which, by the way, I will be at. So if any of you guys are going, make sure to say hi if you see me. Um, I think I'd start Schulte against that one. Uh, it does The result doesn't really matter too much. And I know we lost them in Copa America, but let's be real, our standards are a lot higher. We should be beating Panama with ease, even with a very depleted roster. It's Pach's first game. He's going to want to make an impression. I have faith that we can win this game. I would start Schulte. He's the only young guy here who actually maybe has a little bit of a future. He impressed against Canada kind of saved us, bailed us out a little bit against Canada, even though we did end up losing that game. Uh, so I'd start him. If he has a very good performance, like he did against Canada, I would also start him against Mexico. If not, I would go with Matt Turner just because he's the more senior goalkeeper here. He's been our starter for who knows how long, uh, way too long, to be honest. But he's the experienced guy you go with against Mexico, which, yes, is a friendly, but you always have to be Mexico. And especially getting a win on the road, which has been a while since we've been able to do that in Mexico, it'd be very sweet. So I think you go with whoever's in the best form. I'll be honest. Uh, my thoughts on these goalkeepers. I mean, I kind of summed it up when I before asking you the question. Add them all up, and we still have a, a very sus goalkeeper after all. But I would start Schulte both. I know that Matt is more experienced, but is a good experience, really. Let's be honest. Look at the guy. So I would just go with Schulte solely on the fact that he's the only one I think may have something to play in 26. Realistically, Matt's still going to be involved, but I think we need to start just at. at in, just getting these players used to to playing games on the road against Mexico. If he's the guy really for now, let's just go with him, really. I would like to see him both on both games. Now, moving on right here to the defenders. Again, we're always very depleted uh, when it comes to injuries. This time, I'm actually not going to say I'm glad one of the players is injured, but I, I like, I'm like. i happy how some new names are being tossed around. I think first right here, Marlon Fossey being rewarded, perhaps, for his last uh, appearance on the camps. Christopher Lund, Mark McKenzie, Tim Ring, Anthony Robinson, Jedi, Miles Robinson as well, Joe Scally, and Austin Trusty. I was referring to CCV, not because I wish anything bad upon the guy, but I think it allows for a chance for Trusty, who I'm not a big fan of, but he hasn't been given a fair shot, and CCV has in the past. So your thoughts on these uh defenders do you agree with me uh do you who do you think would you well who would you start as well uh in the pairing i think for the fullbacks kind of picks itself but yeah so i'll start with the fullbacks here like you said marlon fossey uh, i'm really happy that he got rewarded i think he was very good against new zealand uh in our last camp one of our only good players throughout that disastrous camp of Mikey Varus and it's nice to see him rewarded I think it's also notable that he had a game against Brian Reynolds I think we mentioned it on the stock watch then he thoroughly outplayed him uh, that's the, his main competition for the right back three spot because of course we know Sergio Dest our main starter is injured Scali moves into the starter like you said it picks himself at the left back it's the same two Jedi Robinson obviously starts Christopher Lund as the backup I thought he had a, a solid camp nothing necessarily too notable but he wasn't bad unlike a lot of the other players so i guess that's kind of a positive caleb wiley as well who was at the last camp in place of jedi because he was getting rested wiley is now injured he got injured basically right after the camp happened so there was really no even debate here john tolkien i think is maybe the only a mission that has a chance he's been playing pretty well in mls i, I would li i'd like to see him get a chance at some point but for now with potch's first camp it makes sense to go with lund for the center backs like you said ccv is injured chris richards is also injured uh, our main center back the guy who's probably the only locked in center back on our on our roster john brooks is also injured for whatever that's worth i don't think he should ever get a call up again but some people still like the guy so i, I guess that's worthy to know for the center backs here, a lot of people I'm seeing are mad at Miles Robinson being included, and some people even mad at Trusty as well, because they saw him play against Dortmund in the Champions League the other day, which was an absolute disaster. I won't sugarcoat it, but I don't think there's a problem with either of these. Realistically, two of our top four center backs right now, I don't like the fact that CCV is a top four center back, but right now, based on current form, he probably is. 
two of them are injured, you have to call in replacement guys. Would I have liked to see Jalen Neal and Max Dietz instead? Yes. However, Neal isn't in the best of form in MLS. I think he's been very overrated by some people recently. And Dietz as well isn't, again, in the best of form in the Zwei Bundesliga, the second division of Germany. So bringing in guys who are experienced, who have been with the team in the past, like Miles, who at least is playing well in MLS for all of his faults. I would have liked to see Walker Zimmerman over him because he was better at the Olympics, but it kind of is what it is. Trusty, he plays in Europe, he gets a fair chance, like you said. I'm not too optimistic about it, but I think McKenzie and Reem kind of have to be the starters here out of just no other options being there. Maybe you start Miles one game, maybe you start Trusty one game. I think we're going to see a lot of rotation here because Poch is going to want to get as good of a look at all of these guys as possible and decide who he wants to keep for the next camp. I think this is kind of just a tryout, but really we have no options. Any center back duo we go with is going to be bad. Yeah, I was going to say that. I think we need to, I don't want to be too pessimistic here, really. My thoughts on these, uh, I really like the fullbacks. I like Fossey. I like Lund, who I will say, against Napoli, as a winger, played really, really well. I don't know if anyone watched that. But he has the versatility as well. Uh, we're missing a lot of wingers, so who knows? I don't think it will be tried, but I don't, I don't have any issues with the fullbacks. I think no one would have one. But with these center backs, really... It kind of has to be Trusty. Uh, some people are re really upset. It has to be him. Uh, even though I think Trusty is a bit of a, an experiment. What happens when you throw an MLS level defender in Europe, in the Premier League? He helps his defense get 100, concede more than 100 goals. He goes to Celtic. It's destroyed against Dortmund. But it has to be him uh, at this point. So this is where I think Poch's coaching is going to shine. If he helps us be stable at the back with the, without any time basically a lot of injuries and with subpar center backs let's be honest we're going to hopefully have a better pairing for the future but let's hope that his uh, hand shines through and helps guide us uh, from the back there now the midfielders we have brendan aronson brandinho getting a call up uh Gianluca Buzio, Johnny Cardozo, Weston McKinney, Aiden Morris, Yunus Musa, and Malik Tillman, who in the past has been listed on the forwards, but now he's on the midfielders group. So I think that USSF finally caught on that he's more of a 10. Thoughts on these ones? As always, we're missing a few players. Notable absences. Do you agree with these uh, midfielders selected, Braden? Well, the notable absences are Luca Della Torre and Giorena, who were both at last camp kind of. Reyna got injured in training before the first game of last camp. He left. He's still not back. Shocker there. Gio Reyna being injured. Imagine my surprise. Uh, but Luca Del Torre unfortunately picked up an injury. He actually played very well in the last camp. I was thinking maybe if he didn't get injured, maybe he would have had a chance to get called up. But unfortunately, he is hurt. Although, that does open up a chance for Gianluca Busio, who has been playing very well for Venezia in Serie A. Very excited to see him called up here. He's the only real new name here that I think outside of the, the main guys, maybe Sex Stefan as well, since he was out of the picture for a couple of years. But realistically, the rest of the roster are guys who have been around the team, uh, maybe not in every single roster, but they've been in and around the selection. Busio is kind of a new guy in, so I'm excited to see what he can do. This is Pacha's first real bold selection, I guess. So hopefully he justifies that. I, I expect to see him get some meaningful minutes in at least one of the games. Maybe it's against Panama, which means a little bit less. I hope he gets a start. That would be great to see, uh, especially rewarding his form because we have two other Serie A midfielders there. Weston McKenney carving out a spot for Juventus. I thought he played exceptionally uh, against RB Leipzig in the Champions League uh, today as we're recording this. But yesterday as the video goes out, great performance from him. It's so nice to see him finally motivated and back in the team. If he can bring that to the USMNT, we have a, a real player on our hands. Yunus Moose is there as well. Busio has been better than Musa in Serie A. There's no debate to it, really. He's older as well, has more experience, which is kind of crazy because Musa has so many more caps. But I'd like to see Busio start over Musa. Kind of a bold take there, but I, I think he's just the better player right now. Johnny Cardoso is the only true six, or I guess Aiden Morris is there as well. Morris, uh, one of the other ones. I think him and Fossey were the two from last camp that got rewarded. Maybe Schultze as well, but which is nice to see. I thought he was very solid. He's been great at Middlesbrough this season, so it's nice to see him there. I'd actually start him over Johnny as well, especially if you look at last camp. Johnny also had a bit of a knock that he just recovered from. He hasn't been playing too much for Albertis, which is a little bit of a concern now uh, that we're a little bit in farther into the season. 
So uh, nothing really of surprise there. Uh, I, I have no complaints with this group. And I think another big thing is that Brendan Aronson, you mentioned Tillman being listed as a forward in the past. Aronson has always been listed as a forward, but now he's finally there at the 10 position. Poch specifically mentioned he was asked about Brendan in one of his press conferences, and he said, uh, he praised all of his qualities, said he, he's versatile, also said that he's been playing in too many positions. I think this is the camp where we finally see him play the 10, his best position, behind Malik Tillman, probably uh, in the depth chart, but Rain is not here. It opens up a lot of minutes, and I'm very excited to see what he can do. I have no complaints, really, with the midfield group. I, I know you're probably going to make a claim for Tessman. I think that's fair, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I was just going to address that because the people know I'm a big fan of him, but I actually don't have too many issues with him being included out of this one because he just got his first start for his club. The coach also said that they're going to pounce on the, some training sessions for the players that weren't released so it's great for work for him since he didn't have a preseason and he just got the first start it's not like form really justifies a call up right here the only thing that i could try to argue is well the guys in the last camp apart from Aiden morris johnny didn't really have the best of showings but don't have too many issues with that one but there is one guy that I would 100% call up instead of Yunus Musa, is Pexton Aronson. I think that if people watch Pexton, if they had swapped bodies and names and everything, and Musa was playing like that in the Eredivisie, and Paxton and Mil AC Milan, people would try to bring up that narrative that Paxton is just Brendan's brother, and that they, they have done that in the past, that he only got the move to Germany because he's his brother, and then they would say, look at Musa, he's shining through in the Eredivisie. So I think... I would leave Musa out. I know it's not going to happen, but I would sincerely do. I think that Paxton has more tenacious on the ball. He has more drive, and he's not as comfortable. I think that Musa hasn't done anything, anything to warrant a call-up, in my opinion. And way back, I said that I think that Buzio is better than Musa. I think it's not being proven, but I think it's worth a try to start Buzio over him. I have a few issues with that. As far as the sixes, I would also start Aiden Morris. And Johnny, hopefully he, he recovers from his injury. Uh, he's probably still a little dizzy with those Tokyo dreaming about him. Uh, it made him look like Iniesta. Uh, and now moving on right here to the forwards, we have Fuller and Balogun, Ricardo Pepe, Christian Pulisic, Captain America, Josh Sargent, Tim Weah, and Haji Wright. Sargent and Wright uh, both scoring as well this week, so it's nice to see. On the forwards, uh, a lot of these guys have been doing quite well, actually firing in all cylinders. I'm curious, who would be your starting number nine? And do you think there are any notable misses right here? I think it's one of the only groups where we don't have a major absence. Yeah, it's really nice to see all of these guys are in good form besides Weya, who, of course, has been out injured. So that's no fault of his own. I mean, you can't have good form when you're in the hospital. So yeah, it is interesting to see him in this roster, though, because I really doubt if he's actually going to be healthy uh, by game time. I, I hope he is, because if he's not, our only winger is Pulisic and Haji Wright is a winger, but I don't know if I'd necessarily consider him a true winger. I do think that's still his best position, but out and out wingers, Pulisic's really the only guy that we have here if Wei is not healthy. Now, that is because we have Kevin Paredes injured, Cade Cowell, who was called as an injury replacement to Reyna in the last camp. I don't think he should be here regardless, by the way, but he is injured, so that's just a fact. Griffin Yao, who I think maybe would have been warranting of a call-up, is also injured. Paxton Aronson, you mentioned him as a midfielder. I don't see the point in bringing three number 10s, but if you wanted to play Paxton or Brendan or Malik, have one of them play out on the wing, specifically Malik, actually, because that is where he plays for PSV. He lines up on the left-hand side. I think him on the left, Pulisic on the right, have Brendan in the middle as and Paxton as a backup. I mean, he's very versatile. He can play the 8, he can play the 10, he can play on the wing. Uh, I think, honestly, it would be a very ideal situation. I would have included him in this roster, let Weah recharge and get fully fit and try to win back his starting spot at Juve because after he got hurt, they brought in two new wingers. He played a couple of games off the bench and then he just re-aggravated his injury. So he needs to get back uh, into the conversation for them. Uh, I think it would have been better to leave him off here, but I do also understand why he's here. I mean, he's one of the main leaders in the group. It's important to be around the team in Poch's first camp. Uh, as for the strikers, they're all in form. Balogun, before the Champions League match today, just scored in back-to-back -back games in the league. Sargent, like you mentioned, scored, also had two assists in the games before that. Haji just scored, uh, which was much needed because he had been benched in the previous game. Pulisic, we all know how good of a form he's been in. I have no issues with the call-ups besides the, the Wea thing, but that's just an injury precaution uh, from my perspective. For the starting nine, I think it's still Balogun, although I would say I want to see Sargent start 
a game because I still don't think he's been given a fair chance. Just start him in one game, in one camp at some point. And if he doesn't impress, then sure, put him back down to number three at the depth chart. But he hasn't had the chances that these other guys have. Okay, interesting. I agree with you. I was very surprised that way it was included, actually. I, I haven't really kept up with Twitter, with people that, that put up the news. Uh, so I, I was really surprised that way it was even fit, really. I don't know if it's the smartest decision to call him up, but hey, the guy's never going to turn down the call up, as, as we know. I'm just a little worried if that won't it won't be like a Tyler Adams situation. I don't think there was much of a need for that to happen here. For my starting nine, it'll be Balogun on both games. Uh, I, I know that Sargent hasn't really been given the fairest of shots, really, but he's always injured, too. It's like he's just coming back, and last time he got injured during camp, so I would just start Balogun, get him used to playing against these minnows like Panama, which he scored against a really nice goal, and then away at Mexico. I think that's a really important game to put out your starters will hopefully be the basis for this squad. I know we're missing a lot of players, but for the guys that will be the new leadership council, let's say. But moving on right here, uh, obviously in terms of performances, not, none of that stuff that they had of the previous coach. Now moving on right here to the expectations, because as we know, and you said, you hinted at it in the beginning of the video, it's not really specifically about the players. We can't sign anyone, although we, we do have a bunch of dual nationals, but we have the pool that we have. We have the injuries that we have. Some, some of these names may not some people may agree with some, may disagree with some, but at the end of the day, it comes down to coaching. This is why this guy was hired. Your expectations from this camp, is there any, I know that there were a couple of formations in, uh, mentioned, any one of them that you prefer, Braden, anything that you want to see? And if we leave camp doing this one thing, you name it, you think it's a successful one, your take. Yeah, so Poch mentioned a 4-2-3-1 and a 4-3-3 as the formations that he'll primarily be using, which is to be expected. I mean, like we've said, he doesn't have a lot of time, or he didn't, to get familiar with the player pool. But, I mean, we mentioned it in the roster inclusions. They're all basically guys that have been in and around the team in the past. It's primarily the same set of players. Both of those formations are the ones that we've been using uh, over the, the recent past. The 4-2-3-1 more with the interim managers that we had. The 4-3-3 with Greg, of course. 4-2-3-1 is also Poch's preferred formation at the majority of the clubs that he's been at. So I expect that to be what he goes with. And I actually do think that that suits us very well. I'm just not sure if a Johnny Musa pivot is the best idea. But we have Aiden Morris and Busio in there. So maybe those two get a start together and impress. I, I think that's that's at least worth trying out, maybe against Panama. As for expectations, I, I do kind of expect two wins. Uh, I'm going to be optimistic here and even say, even if we don't win, uh, I care more about the performances from some of the key guys and how Poch has us looking. If we lose a shithouse game uh, at Mexico where they just scrap, they play dirty, they get like a late penalty or something, but the performance looks good on paper, it's nice to watch and we look like we're dominant in the game, that's fine. It's a friendly. It's not a competitive game. That comes next camp when we have Nations League, the quarterfinals. But for now, I just care more about the basic ideas that Posh is instilling in the team. And more than anything, I want the guys to look like they care. Because to be honest, in Copa America over the summer, it, it didn't really look like they cared. And I think that showed by the way we got grouped a really stupid red card from Tim Weah. Someone who cares does not make that mistake. I'm sorry, they just don't. Uh, and a lot of the other defensive lapses that we had and uh, some of the missed chances as well. I mean, I don't want to get back into that nightmare time, but even in the last camp, and I do understand a little bit because it was Mikey Varas. They probably don't have a lot of respect for him. They don't know the guy. Understandable. Uh, but you still have to care for your country. Anytime you go out there, it's a badge of honor to wear the crest. And the players just didn't treat it like that in the two games. I, I just want to see that. I want to see the players care about representing their nation and really putting 110% into it. I think that's what Poch is going to want. He's always had his teams work notoriously hard. I think that's one of the reasons why Brendan Aronson might be the perfect player for him, especially at the 10 position maybe you put Tillman out wide and have Aronson as a pressing 10 could be a, a potential idea but at the end of the day that's all I want I mean, the results are nice it'd be so sweet to beat Mexico in Mexico in Pacha's first camp beating Panama as well getting revenge from Copa America would also be nice some nice storylines in there but at the end of the day the results come secondary for me at least for this camp 
Okay, that's interesting. We have a huge contrast right here of opinions. Uh, not that any of us is right. I think you're probably more the more sensible one here because at the end of the day, it's a friendly. It's build upon. It's build upon. But I'm a little impatient to be honest, and I would be very pessimistic right here. Uh, I don't expect us to win both games. In fact, uh, I think we might not even want to win one. I just think that the back line is very suspect. I'm really relying on Poch to show something, but it's just one camp. I uh, don't want to, and I hope that nobody, regardless of the results, let's say we lose both, don't jump onto conclusions or even accusing him of not being the right guy. It's a long process and he barely has the, the tools to do it because a lot of players are injured. But if I'm being realistic uh, with what my heart is going, I think we're going to have a tough camp. As you mentioned, I think he will have a tendency to play probably Moose and Johnny, and that's not through no fault of his own. He's going to look at the players that have been playing and I'm not too optimistic that those two guys specifically playing in Mexico would amount to anything really for us. I think it'll be tough, but hey, we have one special player that's in a really, really good moment of his career. I think the best probably uh, CP. I think that he's probably the guy that's going to bail us out. Uh, and it hasn't been the theme, uh, honestly, in the past too. But I think that it will be a successful camp. As you say, if you, we see a foundation being layered, yeah, simply, there's things are still not coming off. It's not too cohesive, but the passion. That's the one thing I want to see, passion, because we, we got absolutely destroyed by Canada. I know it's just a one goal margin, but that's unacceptable. Last camp, a lot of lapses in concentration. Players seem like they don't care, and that really pains me. And I'm in a very pessimistic, the most pessimistic I've ever been, really, with the team. And not, that's not because of the coach. It's just because of the theme of the recent performances. So, guys, let us know in the comments below. What do you think? I know that Braden was likely the more sensible one. Hopefully, you guys are in that train of thought, and you guys uh, agree that we should build upon this. And hopefully, you're optimistic that we're going to win as well I'm, i really would like to be surprised and see two out of two but leave a like subscribe share with your friends and comment down below what do you think about the rosters any names that you would have liked to see uh, on this one and we'll make sure to reply to all of you guys and we'll see you next time